Ernest Hemingway's On the Quay at Smyrna is set in early September 1922. Terrified victims of war eager to leave Smyrna are stuck on a pier. These civilians seem blocked from leaving or lack boats. This evacuation progresses much too slowly for these people fleeing atrocities. A narrator, an unidentified speaker, a British officer, and British troops are in ships in the harbor. Capable of shelling Turkish parts of the city, British ships deter Turkish troops from being too aggressive. The British are there to protect the Greeks, but seem unfriendly when they use searchlights on ships to silence Greeks when they scream at night. It is not clear why Greeks scream, why the British don't respond in a genuinely helpful way, or why searchlights silence such screaming. Perhaps the Turks commit atrocities in the dark. In any case, the officer who is speaking is satisfied with searchlights. That always did the trick. Turkish ships are also in the harbor, and Turkish troops make advances in the city. Ataturk's men are successful invaders of a zone declared neutral. The vignette is set in 1922, but was not published until 1930 as a preface or author's introduction to a new edition of In Our Time. As a reporter, Hemingway in 1922 was in a good position to know that atrocities were carried out by both Turkish and Greek troops. Hemingway never personally visited Smyrna, now Izmir, but was in Constantinople on September 30th. He was on assignment to report what was happening as the Ottoman Empire dissolved. The specific events in Hemingway's vignette may not have happened, but horrors certainly occurred. A British officer's voice dominates the vignette. General Harrington was in charge of a supposedly neutral zone, but Ataturk's Turkish forces invaded Smyrna on August 30th after victory over Greeks at Apion. Italian and French armies had fled. Hemingway may have been influenced by the language of a close British friend named Eric Dorman Smith, nicknamed Chink. British troops were in Smyrna due to the Allied powers negotiating a partition of the Ottoman Empire and authorizing a zone of Smyrna. The British protected the city's ethnic Greek population. The British were not entirely neutral since they had earlier encouraged Greeks to grab as much of Asia Minor as possible while the Ottoman Empire disintegrated. But Turks fought with greater success, pushing Greek military forces back. Smyrna was clearly going to be part of modern Turkey, but the British stayed and expected the Turks to allow Greeks and others to evacuate. Smyrna had a mix of Greeks, Turks, Armenians, Jews, Europeans, and others until September 1922. Christians and Muslims had lived peaceably in the city until the horrible Greco-Turkish War that erupted in 1919 after Europeans stopped fighting their great war. Greeks in Smyrna outnumbered Turks. The last Greek troops evacuated Smyrna on September 8, 1922. Chaos ensued. Turkish troops turned on civilians, targeting Smyrna's Armenian population. Fires broke out. Much of the port city was destroyed. Thousands of Greek and Armenian refugees crammed the waterfront to escape the fire, but Turkish boats controlled the water. Civilians were forced to remain near the waterfront and on piers under harsh conditions for nearly two weeks. Hemingway's vignette does not say it, but readers should assume that Greeks at the edge of the quay begged the British to let them board the warships. Taking in non-British refugees was not the mission of those warships.